Okay. Hello. Uh, hopefully people can hear me. And potentially spotlight me. There we go. Hi. So please introduce yourself in the chat. And I think because we've got a, a good amount of people joining us today that we might just have to mute everyone for the, uh, at least initially. Um, but yeah, we've got a chat option on the right hand side. You could just say hello there and just get a sense of who's joining us from what part of the country and which institutions. I saw that a, a good many universities are joining us or staff from those universities rather. Okay, and we have a good range of speakers joining us today as well. We've got Sarah Lappin up first from uh, University of Edinburgh's Women in STEM Society. Hannah Rothman, our brilliant Wikimedia intern and classics undergraduate at the University of Edinburgh. We have also Lorna Campbell from our OER service, our Open Education Resources Service. We've got, we've also got some faces that I know very well as well. Karen Bowman, who's written about 60 articles for us, mostly about Scotland's suffragettes. And we've also got Lucy Crompton Reid, who is the chief executive of Wikimedia UK, which is the non-profit organization that supports Wikipedia work in the UK. So we've got a lot of speakers. Dr. Sarah Thomas, who is the Scotland program coordinator for um, Wikimedia in Scotland, got her injection, her vaccination yesterday. So she unfortunately is not going to join us because she's feeling a bit poorly. Um, but she has recorded a video for us about all the brilliant work that's been that she's helping support throughout Scotland. So hopefully we'll get a chance to show that. Um, my name, uh, for those that don't know me, is Ewan McAndrew, and I've worked for the last five years now um, at the University of Edinburgh as Wikimedian in residence. Um, there's someone else joining us. So I'm, I'm because we've got so many sort of brilliant speakers, I'm just going to launch into our presentations and hopefully uh, we'll have a little pause where you can ask maybe a, a, a couple of questions, but feel free to keep introducing yourself in the chat and also to um, maybe pose some questions for some of our speakers. Um, I think that's the main thing. Um, this is part of the University of Edinburgh's Digital Skills Festival, which will run all week. Um, and we are planning this session to run up until 1 p.m. today. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to pass over to Sarah Lappin. Lappin? I'm not sure if I've got yeah. saying that right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And then I'll stop spotlighting me and spotlight you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'll just get some slides up one second. Um, there we go. Can you see that, okay? Yep, we can see that. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, as you said, uh, I'm Sarah. I am just finishing up my undergrad at Edinburgh University. Um, and for the past year, I've been the president of the Women in STEM Society um, at the university. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to talk about why and how we've been working to tackle the gender gap um, on Wikipedia. Um, so just before we begin, um, can I get into why we're doing this, what is the problem in the first place. Um, so as of I think last week, um, there was 18.9% uh, of all English language Wikipedia biographies were of women. Um, and you can see the, the last statistics I had, um, it was 15% uh, in 2014. So obviously it's increasing. Uh, and that's like thanks to um, campaigns such as the Women in Red campaign, um, which is aiming to increase the representation of women on Wikipedia. Um, but the problem isn't only just in the articles, uh, it's also on the, uh, the editors. So, um, sorry, the siren's coming by. Um, um, 
Yeah, so um, the statistics I found, I found some, saw some different ones this morning, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, was that there's between 15 and 30 percent of contributors to Wikipedia are women. Um, so why does this matter? Um, so obviously for centuries, uh, history has been told mostly by rich white men and rich white men love to talk about other rich white men. Um, and so a lot of women have been written out of history, but even more recently, um, women are not being recognised for their achievements and their contributions um, in society. Um, so the reason why matters is women didn't, um, and I don't think anyone can dispute that, um, but there's sort of more important issue as well. Um, so Wikipedia is the fifth most visited website in the world, and people around the world rely on it for accurate information. Um, and if these women are not, stories are not being told, they can't be found by other women and can't be used as role models. Just as an example, um, yesterday I googled Scottish scientist and so like list, and even if you, you'll see that there's actually I don't know if there's a single woman on that list when you click that link. And um, also there is Scottish uh, female Scottish scientists. Um, it's not that they don't exist. It's not that they live less notable lives than men. Um, it's just their stories aren't being told. Um, so what do we need to do? Um, so there's two things. There's increased the number of biographies uh, of women on Wikipedia and also recruit more diverse contributors um, and make an inclusive and welcoming environment for the people that are new to um, Wikipedia as well. Um, so what we've been doing as with Women in STEM Society is we've run two editions this year. Um, so these are basically events where um, Ewan has um, delivered some training um, and then we've gone off and we've tried to try to have as big an impact on Wikipedia as we can. So we create a big work list um, and we just work through it and um, add new articles and edit to improve other ones that already exist. So we had one that was focused on women in STEM in particular and um, we had Dr Jess Wade as a guest speaker. If you don't know who she is and haven't heard, she does amazing talks on this exact issue. So I'm sure lots of things that you can send, um, but I would really recommend listening to some of her talks. Um, and then the second one we did was for International Women's Day, um, and we had Professor Linda Bald as a speaker. And um, you can see the top one there, that was the one we had for uh, for Women's STEM. So we had five articles created, um, overall 14.4k words added. We had a bit of a bigger impact in the second one that was run over a week rather than a day. Um, so we had 32 articles created. Um, so you can see we have a direct impact very quickly with these events, um, but it also does more than that. So the obviously the big training. So now I I didn't have any experience at Wikipedia before we had held this event. So now I can go off and I can keep doing this. Um, so it's not a one-time thing. Everyone that joins these events can continue to do it, um, and um, that obviously adds to the um, the diversity of both articles and editors. Um, but they also have provided really good inspiration. Um, so personally, I really enjoyed running these events because I get to create the work list and I get to read about all the amazing stories of these women that are not being told. Um, and then you get to see them go off and be told and get people actually really interested in these stories. Um, so just as an example, this is uh, Deja Fox. So this is an article I wrote um, at our last one. And so it was created in March and it's already had over 3000 views. Um, so you can see it's instantly having that impact and people are really, really interested in these stories. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of all for me. Um, I hope everyone just keeps editing and telling more stories of women on Wikipedia because there's so many that haven't been told. So I, th I think we could give a, a virtual round of applause for Sarah there, this little clap icon. Um, but yeah, that's brilliant, Sarah. And there's a, 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 a comment in the chat there from Laura at the Devil's Porridge Museum, just saying, great talk. The Devil's Porridge are hoping to contribute to eradicating the gender gap with a new research project into Her Majesty's Factory Gretna, where thousands of women worked in World War I. Uh, interesting, there were lots of women in STEM at Gretna. Many were described as laboratory assistants. So there we go. Um, yeah, anyone have a quick question for Sarah before we crack on? No, oh, um, it's okay. If you if you do think of a question, just post it in the chat, and we'll maybe bring Sarah back. 
I'm going to now segue quite swiftly on to our next speaker. Thank you, Sarah, um, who is Lorna Campbell, my, my nemesis and uh, longtime colleague at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, and I will spotlight Lorna and remove Sarah. There we go. Hopefully you can all see Lorna's smiling face. Thanks, you. It loves me, really. <laughs> Uh, my name is Lorna Campbell and as Ian said I'm the Open Education Resources Service Manager here at the University of Edinburgh and I'm also a trustee of Wikimedia UK so if you just give me a second I am actually just going to share my screen I have got some uh, web pages that I want to show you can you see that okay Ian? Yep all good. Brilliant okay so Wikimedia's vision is to imagine a world in which every human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. However, as we've already heard from Sarah, Wikimedia, its communities and its projects are not yet representative of the diversity of the world and the diversity of knowledge to be shared. Women, people of colour, Indigenous communities and LGBTQ individuals are all underrepresented in Wikimedia communities and projects, of which Wikipedia is the best known. LGBTQ lives, histories and experiences are particularly poorly represented on Wikipedia, but there are a number of initiatives that are helping to redress the balance. Wikipedia has an LGBT plus user group that aims to increase the quantity and quality of LGBT plus content on the encyclopedia and encourage LGBT plus cultural organisations to adopt the values of free culture and use Wikimedia projects as tools for strengthening queer communities. The user group supports a range of activities, including Wikiloves Pride and Wikipedia for Peace, which among other things, runs editathons to coincide with the Europride festivals. In 2019, supported by a generous grant from Wikimedia UK, I was able to attend the Wikipedia for Peace editathon at Europride Vienna, as part of a group of 12 editors from all over the world who created and translated 113 new articles on LGBT plus topics in a range of European languages and also uploaded hundreds of photographs of the Europride parade on Wikimedia Commons, making a significant contribution to improving the quality, diversity and queer representation on Wikipedia. It was while taking part in the Europride Editathon that I noticed that the history of HIV and AIDS activism in Scotland was completely absent from the encyclopaedia. Scottish AIDS Monitor, Face West, two prominent AIDS awareness organisations had no articles at all. And although an article already existed for Derek Ogg, the founder of Scottish AIDS Monitor, it only touched on his legal career and made no mention at all of his important AIDS activism. So when the university's Disabled Staff Network and Staff Pride Network decided to run an editathon for LGBT History Month in February this year to follow up their successful Pride editathon on LGBT plus books in Scotland and beyond, I suggested HIV and AIDS activism in Scotland as a topic. The networks were keen to address this omission and HIV Scotland also came on board to support the event. Um, with sterling support from Ewan, I'm pleased to say that six new articles were created and several others improved, making a significant contribution to representing the history of HIV and AIDS activism in Scotland on Wikipedia. We created new articles for Scottish AIDS Monitor, Face West and HIV Scotland, and improved our biographical art articles and created new ones for activists Derek Ogg, Ken Cowan and Maureen Moore. But of course, there's still a huge amount of work to be done and numerous other activists, organisations, films, plays, artworks are still missing from Wikipedia, as highlighted by this list, which is curated by Wikipedia AIDS, a community collaboration dedicated to improving articles about HIV and AIDS. Shortly after the HIV Scotland Editathon, I also created a Wikipedia article for Jill Nolder the actress and activist who inspired the central character of Jill Baxter in It's a Sin, Russell T Davis' TV series focusing on a group of gay men and their friends during the early days of the AIDS crisis in the UK. 
Nolder, who also plays the fictional Jill's mother in the TV series, became involved in HIV and AIDS activism while living in London in the 1980s, at the height of the AIDS crisis. With other members of the West End theatre community, she organised fundraising campaigns and benefit performances to support AIDS awareness and research. And she also supported HIV positive gay men and visited AIDS patients in hospitals around London, something we see the fictional Jill doing in the TV series. Although It's a Sin received widespread critical acclaim, it was criticised in some quarters for stereotyping women as carers and for centering the experiences of cis women rather than gay men. And while there's a, decision to be, a discussion to be had there, it's important to acknowledge that many women did play an important role in awareness raising, fundraising, befriending and caring for people living with AIDS in the earliest years of the pandemic. If we don't remember the contribution of these women, it's very easy to assume that they simply weren't there. And while I was putting this talk together, I actually discovered another AIDS activist who's missing from Wikipedia, Aileen Gutzer, a nurse who features in the award-winning American documentary film about the HIV and AIDS crisis in San Francisco, We Were Here. During the airing of It's a Sin, the hashtag Be More Jill started trending to raise awareness of HIV and AIDS and the importance of activists like Jill and her fictional counterpart. And one of the things that you can do to be more Jill is to join a Wikipedia editathon learn to edit and help to ensure that LGBTQ lives and histories are represented on the world's most important source of free and open knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, we're hoping to sort of continue uh, this work sort of with our new student intern as well. She's gonna have a, a very strong focus this summer on uh, equality, diversity and inclusion and uh, we want to sort of like continue to sort of add more stories about uh, the uh, work of awareness and the activism of uh, supporting HIV and AIDS in Scotland. Um, so that's definitely an area of... Uh, oh yeah, there's a comment. Uh, thank you, Lorna. Very good work remembering recent past before materials get lost. Um, if it, yeah, for anyone that's wanting about to know about the links, you should be able to click the links within the chat. I've noticed that Zoom doesn't allow you to copy and paste, but if anyone needs any of them, I can send them on after today's event as well. But you should be allowed, I think they might be clickable, but not copyable, if you see what I mean. Um, does anyone have any questions for Lorna or Sarah or... No, okay, that's, oh, how can you join an editathon? Are they institution specific? I think I should let you answer that one, Ewan. <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, we tend to run sort of very focused events on a particular theme at the university, but we tend to try and make them open as possible and post uh, events on Eventbrite and yep. on the Wikimedia in Scotland uh, pages and on the Wikimedia UK pages, but there are editathons that happen throughout the UK and throughout the world, basically. And it's just making sure that you're aware of mailing lists and where these events are posted. And normally, you should be able to sign up for free. Uh, and at, at all levels of ability are welcome, basically. Yeah, it's. I was going to suggest if you keep an eye on um, Wikimedia UK's website, um, they post um, regular updates of events running up and down the country. And also, if you're not in the UK, um, a lot of other countries have their own Wikimedia chapters who will also be running events as well. So the first step is to find your local Wikimedia chapter, find out what events they are running. And now that so many of these events are taking place online, it's easier than ever before um, to learn how to edit. Yep, um, we do have an editathon on Wednesday, a Women in Red event. Um, if anyone wants to join an editathon, I'll put the link in that uh, in the chat if I can find it. But um, I think what I'll do now is I'll try and see if I can play Sarah's video. She might be able to give us a nice summary of 
the work that that's been done in Scotland. And I'll find that way, link for the uh, editathon on Wednesday. So hopefully this should work. And I'm going to just try and share my screen. No, that didn't work. Okay, one moment. Okay. So this is Dr. Sarah Thomas, who's unfortunately unable to join us today, but she supports work in Scotland um, as the Scotland Programme Coordinator for Wikimedia UK. So she's recorded us this talk and hopefully let me know if you cannot hear this. I work with books and organisations all over Scotland to help them engage with Wikimedia projects, including galleries, libraries, archives, museums and educational institutions. The range and scope we've been doing in Scotland has, um, the range and scope of work we've been doing in Scotland has increased massively over the last few years. And I'm really fortunate. I just want to check that people can hear that okay. Sound is a bit patchy, says Alice. Yeah, it's cutting out quite a bit. Okay. What I'll do then is I will send that on to people and we will move on. Sometimes it's nice to include everything. So let's try and move on to my talk. Okay, so like I say, this is part of our University of Edinburgh Digital Skills Festival event. And if you want to find out more about our Digital Skills Festival, then you can go to digitalskillsfestival.ed.ac.uk. Um, and I'll speak a little bit about the work we do at the University of Edinburgh now. Some, I can hear some typing in the background. If someone could mute their microphone. Thank you. Okay. So Wikipedia has uh, been around since 2001 now. And it was acclaimed in 2011 by the Chronicle of Higher Education that it had come of age and could play a formal role in uh, education settings. So that's 10 years ago. Where are we today? Well, the residency at the University of Edinburgh had its beginnings um, back in 2014. Well, when if you cast your mind back, a national debate was taking place in Scotland about how to make a fairer, better, more inclusive society in the run up to the referendum on Scottish independence. This was also the year that the Students Association at the University of Edinburgh encouraged the university's senior managers to explore how learning materials could be made open, not only for students within the university, but across Scotland and the wider world. Student engagement and co-creation have been fundamental aspects of open education resources work at the university ever since. And the role of Wikimedian in residence has been positioned to uh, go alongside other learning technologists to further embed open practice at the university. The idea would be that this is a multiple return on investment in that the role acts as a free resource and to support key institutional commitments, such as the sharing of open knowledge, information literacy, developing digital skills, and supporting equality, diversity, and inclusion. Here's me at uh, supporting colleagues at our Centre for Regenerative Medicine pre-COVID with the idea of improving articles related to the Euro stem cells. Oh, you, someone saying something? Are you able to share your slides? Oh, were they not shared? 
No, I think we were still on your the video oh, I that didn't work. I beg your pardon. I do beg your pardon. Let me just close that down. I'll just check. Can you see my slide? Uh, that's him come up now, Ian. Apologies. You might want to go full screen for them. There we go. So this is what you missed, essentially. Wikipedia has come of age, talking about how the University Student Association uh, challenged our senior managers to make more resources open back in 2014. And that then led to the development of an OER policy. And as part of that, a Wikimedian in residence position to support and embed open practice at the university. Essentially, I go around like an Avon lady or a traveling salesman talking about Wikipedia and delivering digital skills training events like our Euro stem cell editing event. With the idea, the role has been about developing uh, important 21st century digital research skills and a more robust sense of information literacy among our staff and students and resetting the relationship between academia and Wikipedia away from the abstinence model of that hasn't really worked for us to more uh, being about an active engaged role in sharing knowledge outside the ivory tower because right now wikipedia is the largest open education resource in human history and our staff and students students are using it now today and they find it incredibly useful in an introductory and clarificatory role as part of their initial digital research so we as people as uh, members of this university need to be supporting them in developing good practice and as such, we've been working now in teaching and learning for about five years with positive results year on year. The pace of change and embedding innovation in the curriculum can be incredibly slow at times, but we've grown to around 10 to 12 course programs engaging with Wikimedia in the curriculum. And it's been a positive experience. Brick by brick, students are engaged and helping to build the open web in the spirit in which it was originally intended communicating their scholarship to readers all around the world and taking on the mantle of the expert, taking this responsibility incredibly seriously and considering how to build understanding of their disciplines globally. What teaching fun indeed. This was our very first editing event back in February 2015, when we could all be in a room together. And it focused on to what extent our staff and students we're being supported formally and informally in the developing of a more robust information literacy and learning new professional digital skills. And if so, could this be used to encourage uh, to be more widespread across teaching and learning? The event itself was focused on creating and improving pages about the Edinburgh Seven, the first group of matriculated female students to study at a UK university when they began studying medicine at Edinburgh in 1869. And the Edinburgh Seven Edithon has been cited as an example of good practice in preparation for the Athena Swan Silver Award to encourage more women to, to undertake uh, STEM careers. And as we are a research-led institution, Professor Alison Littlejohn was invited to evaluate the editing event and the, this point from her research really struck home uh, that participants of the editing event felt that they had agency. They could see the knowledge gaps and the problems in representation, and they felt motivated and empowered that they could make an impact here by addressing those gaps. So we need to reframe Wikipedia in education and see it less as, as a problem of passive consumption and think instead of Wikipedia as a form of learning technology that we can actively engage with and contribute to and gain so much from in terms of developing core competencies and transferable graduate attributes. We can become knowledge activists, particularly where Scotland has a rich story to tell. 
the Mapping the Scotland's Accused Witches project gained a lot of traction in the news media. Um, and it, what, what I like about this project is that students are also opening up research data sets for further research and inquiry and learning important data and science skills ahead of the world of work through working practically with linked open data in Wikipedia's sister project, Wikidata. And I'm pleased that this project has also led to discussions on how best to memorialize the persecution of these women with the talk of uh, statues or new museums, and that this is in too important a subject to, to remain hidden. And this work has then begat further work with research data sets with a new digital humanities project taking place with Newman University in Birmingham and the University of Washington and Lee in the US on mapping the Scottish Reformation. And what we find quite often is that we tend to create open knowledge enthusiasts as part of our work, creating positive experiences and nodes of learning that bring in other colleagues, other projects and other collaborations because of their positive experiences. And we try and document as we go so that people can continue to build on prior learning. Sharing knowledge openly and globally and transparently has never been more important in the building of understanding, whether it is about COVID or Black Lives Matter or anything else. And the need for a neutral platform where you can gain access to knowledge online for free has never been more vital in this era of hybrid teaching, remote working and homeschooling. And what we find is that while course organizers have scrambled to adapt to hybrid teaching in this new normal, We've continued to work with course programs and expanded our work and that Wikipedia is suitable for face to face work in an editathon environment where you can have tea and cupcakes and chats with colleagues, but also we can create that in an online environment as much as possible. And here are some examples of some of the courses we've worked with. Global health challenges. Students collaborate in groups online over the course of four weeks to evaluate short, less than 300 word Wikipedia articles that are about a natural or man-made disaster like the 2020 Assam floods. And they then proceed to research the topic and improve each article's coverage by about a thousand words. We've also worked with Professor Devi Sridhar at the university who's often a staple on our TV screens these days where students on the Masters in Public Health course added, improved or created new content, content for global health related articles and showed how crucial it is to make medicine and information on global health more accessible with a new study concluding that enriching Wikipedia content is a powerful way to improve health literacy. For example, edits to pages about obesity are now viewed 3000 times a day on average. Uh, this is a course program that we've worked with for the last five years, every year, where students on the Reproductive Biology BSE course research a reproductive medical term not represented on Wikipedia in a three hour workshop, working with academic support librarian colleagues. And then in the second, in the, in the second three hour workshop, they then put the article together and publish it but before doing a short oral presentation on their group efforts. And this is a brand new collaboration that we've done this year with Dr. Glare Anderson on the history of Islamic art course, who approached me and said, can we work together, do you think? And I said, yes, absolutely. And students evaluated the quality of articles on Islamic art on Wikipedia as part of their course program and presented on their findings. They then worked in groups of three to four to add 500 words or more to the topic and adding citations and illustrating them with images of scientific instruments and illustrated manuscripts. And what I, I liked about this was that Blair had some concerns that introducing a new technological skill would already make the students more stressed out than they needed to be. But when in fact the students felt that they, um, this was actually one a highlight of their course, and the conclusion that Glare came to was that in a year that brought pervasive systemic justices into relief, 
our experiment and apply our knowledge outside the classroom gave the students a sense that we were creating something positive, something that mattered. And one student commented, really love the Wikipedia project. It feels like my knowledge is actually making a difference in the wider world, if in a small way. And it's students that are leading the way. That's what I like about the work that we do. Often they suggest and initiate collaborations with like the Scotland Slavery and Black History Project. This was a volunteer project where students on the, hist at the, on the History Society and just students coming up from across the university wanted to re-examine the legacy of Scotland's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. And they wanted to look at the sources that were being cited on these pages, like key figures like Sir Henry Dundas. And they wanted to balance it against also providing a more positive uh, examination of black history in Scotland as well, by creating new pages such as University of Edinburgh graduate, Jesse Ewing Glasgow. In all, 16,000 words were added over the course of this project. And just to finish up, we don't wanna stop there. We want to continue this work and support students. So we're developing a Wikipedia Edinburgh Award to give accreditation to, to students that want to engage with Wikipedia so that they can learn a new digital skill and have and receive the, an Edinburgh Award for, for their, their efforts. Whatever field or area they want to examine, they, they will accrue 80 hours from October to March. And we're creating, uh, employing three new student interns as well this summer to support our library and university collections to be more open and be used as open education resources in teaching and learning and to support open data work in the curriculum and improved uh, work supporting equality, diversity and inclusion in the curriculum as well. And one of our brilliant student interns that from last summer is Hannah Rothman and she's going to talk next about making Wikipedia easier to learn for students and course leaders alike. And just to finish, the Edinburgh Seven now have their degrees posthumously, 150 years later than planned. Representation matters. Learning about these stories matters, whether it's about the Edinburgh Seven or Scotland's suffragettes or Scotland's witches or anything else. Gaps in our shared knowledge exclude the vitally important contributions of many within our community. Universities can help remove barriers and kick open more doors. They have access to knowledge and information, and with that, an ethical responsibility to share that knowledge for the greater good. Wikipedia editing events and assignments are one way of nudging that door open. Thank you. So I'm gonna now hand over to Hannah. I've given you a little bit of an introduction uh, and I will spotlight you and right. remove myself. Can you share my screen? All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Hannah and as Ewan said, last summer I was the Wikimedia training intern working with him to develop um, training materials. So training materials. So during that time, which now does feel quite quite a long time ago, um, we created easy to follow how to videos for Wikipedia and other platforms within the Wikimedia Foundation, such as Wikidata. Um, now, why did I spend that first and fingers crossed only lockdown summer creating videos for Wikipedia along with a platform to share them on? Firstly, we wanted to ensure that anyone at the university would feel empowered to contribute to these platforms. Starting to edit as a beginner can feel daunting as the information you need is out there, but often it is buried under a web of blue links. This was something I experienced as when I started last June, I was new to the world of Wiki. Finding easily accessible materials and information was hit or miss because there is a lot of information out there, which is great, but sometimes finding it is pretty difficult when you're new to the platform. Therefore, we wanted to make these videos to ensure that people were not put off before they even started. Also, we wanted to spread the word as it were about Wikipedia throughout the university. The majority of people I know use Wikipedia constantly, 
whether it is to Google plots of films while watching them, something I've done a lot over the past few winter months, much to the annoyance of my flatmates, um, to help out in arguments or just to answer those burning questions you get just when you're about to go to sleep. Um, however, not nearly as many people contribute to or edit Wikipedia. I had never edited it before I started my internship and I hadn't thought about where the seemingly endless, and it is endless, information comes from. Wikipedia is self-described as the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Therefore, part of the goal of creating all these materials was to increase Wikipedia editing and contribution across the university and elsewhere. An idea of knowledge activism, as mentioned by you and earlier, as opposed to passive consumption is inherent in the goal to get more people to contribute. Within universities, many staff and students like myself are in excellent positions to contribute, improve and edit articles. They can access resources, they have specific subject expertise and with some persuasion, a desire to improve Wikipedia. This could mean that they could be valuable editors and empowered knowledge activists. Um, so on the screen, you'll see this is the site um, that we created. So if you type in Wikipedia at the University of Edinburgh, it comes up, I don't know whether my Google algorithm is just really excited about Wikipedia now, but it should come up on your feed. And um, as mentioned on the site, so you can see here, it's, this is the Wikipedian residency. And we'll go to um, oh, Wikipedia, sorry. Um, so as mentioned on the homepage, Wikipedia in 2016, 87.5% of students said that they used Wikipedia um, during their studies. Therefore, as it is already an informal part of education and learning at university, we need to get these same students to contribute to and edit Wikipedia. And so on the left hand side of the page, you can see that we have Before You Start, which has information about well, key information you should know before you start editing Wikipedia such as the importance of neutrality in when you're writing articles and avoiding conflicts of interest. We also have addressing knowledge gaps, which sets out some of the reasons why people should get involved in Wikipedia, which has been addressed already by Lorna and Sarah, such as the gender um, gap and representation online. And also we have exploring Wikipedia, how to create an account, how to edit, making a Wikipedia article and so on. And on all of these pages, these feature videos made throughout my internship. And we decided that this website was one of the clearest ways to show people how to use Wikipedia. And um, we also set up a channel on Media Hopper. Well, the channel was already set up. We contributed videos to the channel on Media Hopper to host the videos. And there's also a YouTube channel. One sec, I can't seem to get to my tab. Um, there's also a YouTube channel. There we go. Um, so that others outside of the university can access and use the content themselves. And we thought this was quite important as Wikipedia is an, a site for open knowledge and access to, to knowledge. So to have it available to everyone is important. There are about 20 videos, some by me and some by others within the Wikimedia community. And on the YouTube channel, there's some positive feedback along with some arbitrary comments. Um, and this demonstrates that these resources have been helpful to the people that they were made for, and they have helped to introduce people to Wikipedia. Our website also features a section on how to contribute to Wikipedia once you're ready to start editing. And these are the edited thons that have already been mentioned. Um, it is an easy way, these edited thons, to try to create some social justice. Overall, the videos and resources I helped to create with Ewan and others within the Wikimedia community aim to ensure that anyone, anywhere, has the tools that they need to contribute to Wikipedia. If any of you have some spare time over the summer, um, check out the website and how you can help contribute to the world's free encyclopedia. Thanks. Well done. Uh... Brilliant. Um, so we've had sort of good responses from uh, people on YouTube and um, from people at University of Toronto that have been using your resources. 
Uh, so it's really pleasing to see uh, that, you know, people are now engaging and finding it a little bit easier to get into. Because I think that's the thing. People know about Wikipedia, but it's not really obvious how to get started. Um, so, yeah, um, we only have one final speaker, and, uh, which is Lucy. But if people want to add any questions into the chat, hopefully we'll have a couple of minutes at the end just to sort of tease out anything that people want to ask. Um, so is Lucy ready? Where is Lucy? Yes, sorry, I just realized I needed to unmute and uh, turn on my video. I am ready. Okay, so where's my... Okay, you're ready to go. Oh, can you able to... Do you have any slides or you're just gonna talk? I'm, I'm just gonna talk. So no screen sharing going okay. on, keeping it simple. Thanks, Ewan, um, and thank you for organising this event and for inviting me to contribute to it. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've really enjoyed hearing all of these lightning talks. And I think the past hour has really demonstrated the huge diversity of the work that's going on in Scotland to open up knowledge, much of which involves the university in some way or another. Um, and Edinburgh has just been such an amazing partner for Wikimedia UK over the past five years, really showcasing what such a partnership can look like and achieve. And I was um, I was reflecting on this earlier and thinking, why, why has that been so successful? And um, although everybody's probably got a different um, explanation, I think that it comes down to three things. Um, one of those is Ewan's work and his linchpin role in convening, facilitating, chivying, <laughs> advocating and delivering Wikimedia activities. Um, I think another thing is having um, Melissa Highton, who is the Director of Learning, Teaching and Web and Assistant Principal at the University, championing the work and taking ownership at a senior level and creating that, that buy-in at a senior level. Um, but then also the fact that there's been this real proliferation of interest, um, multiple others from the university community like Sarah Lapin, Lorna Campbell and Hannah Rothman, who we've heard from today, getting involved and taking the initiative and just really understanding the potential for working with Wikimedia at, at a university. Um, so that's just been fantastic to see. Uh, but in this talk, I wanted to take a step back from our partnership with the university and give a broader view of Wikimedia UK's current strategy and programme, um, and also share a few insights into what we're thinking about in terms of the next few years. Um, so as has probably come across through the course of the day, um, we at Wikimedia UK are the national charity for Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia projects, um, and we aim to demystify and drive engagement and open knowledge. So we're currently delivering activities across four interconnected programme strands, um, which are to increase knowledge equity, um, develop digital literacy, change policy and practice, and grow our own profile and capacity. Um, and I mean, of course, 2020 has been, was a really extraordinary year for everybody and Wikimedia UK was no exception. So in the context of the pandemic, we were particularly focused on that, on that last strand of work and in particular, developing our own organizational resilience and capacity um, and supporting that of our partners, many of whom in the cultural and education sectors have been really significantly affected by the successive lockdowns. We've also been trying to put more of an emphasis on documenting and communicating our work, and particularly regarding our learning around online delivery and new models of engagement. And we've been thinking about how we support the well-being of our staff and volunteers through this incredibly challenging time. Um, I mean, I think it's we shouldn't underestimate the impact, not just of moving to working remotely and delivering an online program, but also the impact of, of the pandemic um, and the economic fallout um, and the health concerns that we've all been living through and dealing with. Um, but I think as a Wikimedia chapter and community, we've got lots to be proud of over the past year. And I'm going to share with you a few highlights of the programme, all of which are things that have taken place outside Scotland, um, because obviously there's, there's been a focus in Scotland from the other speakers. Um, so firstly, I wanted to talk about the Celtic Knot Conference, um, which Wikimedia UK worked with Wikimedia Ireland to deliver online in July 2020, which had over 100 participants and, and we think offered a really valuable mixture of talks, uh, workshop, troubleshooting shooting spaces um, to help attendees work through the barriers that they experience on their language wikis. Um, but I must mention here that the first Celtic Knot, which took place in 2017, was actually in partnership with the University of Edinburgh and a collaboration between Wikimedia UK and the university, and of course took place in person, um, you know, back in the day. 
Um, over the past year, we've been working with the London College of Communications Student Changemakers Program to design and launch a new decolonizing Wikipedia network. And that's really, um, I guess, deepened our thinking around decolonization and, and reflects our commitment to knowledge equity um, and decolonization. Um, We've supported an ongoing collaboration between the Welsh Government, the National Library of Wales and the um, Anglesey Language Enterprise Mentimon um, in the delivery of a really innovative Wiki Wikipedia based education programme in Welsh secondary schools. Um, and as an aside to that, we were really pleased a couple of years ago that Wikipedia and a Wikipedia module became part of the Welsh Baccalaureate after a number of years of, um, of advocacy and, and lobbying for that. Um, We've been working closely with the British Library, who actually accommodated one of our, hosted one of the first ever Wikimedians in Residence nine years ago. Um, and we've been developing the internal case and support and funding for a second Wikimedian in Residence, um, Lucy Henney, who was appointed this spring and has a broad remit across the library. Um, and we've also been working with the Science Museum where they have a, a Wikimedia in residence, but also they've seconded one of our staff one day a week to support them in some very innovative um, work around Wikidata. Um, and just another example, an example, not so much of a project or a collaboration, but um, of our advocacy work, um, which is that I joined the National Lottery Heritage Fund's licensing review advisory group last summer. And the outcome of that is that the NLHF now has an open licensing um, requirement on the digital outputs of all of its funded projects, which is going to make, I think, over the next few years, a really significant impact in terms of the accessibility of cultural heritage. So that's just a, a round robin um, sort of high, set of highlights and pulling out a few, a few pieces of our work. Um, just in terms of going forward in our priorities, we will retain that focus on knowledge equity and information literacy, but also there are some new themes emerging and three that I wanted to mention. One of those is around health information. Um, and you know, obviously this has been sparked by the, by the pandemic, but I think is going to be highly relevant over the next few years at least. Um, the climate crisis um, is increasingly something that we're that we're looking at in terms of um, information on, on Wikipedia and on Wikimedia and the particular angle that we're bringing to it at the moment is exploring the theme of threatened heritage, um, which both draws on our programmatic commitment to climate issues, but also our expertise around heritage and archaeology. Um, and finally, post-COVID recovery, both for ourselves, but also our partners and potential partners. And all of those are going to feature, or I think are likely to feature more strongly in our, in our next strategy from 2022 to 2025, which we'll be working on this year. Um, but finally, I'm just conscious of time, I think I've gone over, but I wanted to mention that this year, 2021, is the 20th birthday of Wikipedia. Uh, we had an event on the, on the day, January the 15th, um, but we're going to be doing different things throughout the year to celebrate the um, extraordinary contribution of volunteers to Wikipedia um, to try and get more supporters, um, more donors, more members, um, and to really have some fun. So we're, we're hoping to hold in-person Wikinics, um, Wikimedia picnics this summer. Um, so look out for those um, and any other 20th birthday activities. Um, and please follow us um, if you don't already, so you know what we're up to. But thanks again to you, and I've really, really enjoyed the past hour. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, let me just see that. I think there was a comment in the chat. Let's see. I don't know why it scrolls always at the top there. Yeah, oh, there's a question about yeah. the, um, yeah, so there, there, are, there are quite a lot more examples um, of work that we've done with, with cultural bodies. I think um, it's worth mentioning here that the uh, National Minority Heritage Fund, in addition to changing their licensing, they're currently delivering a whole set of cultural recovery projects and Wikimedia UK has got some funding as part of that. Um, and that is going to be very much focused on us working with smaller and medium sized cultural heritage organisations to develop their understanding and awareness of how they can work with open knowledge, um, sustainable digital preservation. There will be a lens of um, of knowledge equity, so thinking particularly about collections that represent marginalised histories. Um, but ultimately, it's really about outreach and education, um, because, as you say, I mean, you know, a curator in a, in a, a relatively small collection, um, I know will be very pressed for time um, and needs to have things very clear 
um, so that they understand exactly what they can do and also if they need to advocate for an internal change of policy that they have the case studies and the arguments to hand to do that. And not a second question there. Yeah, so the decolonization network, um, at the moment that is specifically a London College of Communications thing. However, um, uh, not necessarily in the public domain, but we're, <laughs> I know we're on YouTube, um, but we're exploring how we can extend that further. Um, so uh, I guess watch this space, sorry to not be able to give you anything more concrete than that at this point, but we think it's a really exciting programme. But there, there is a Wikimedia UK mailing list. So I'm imagining that if um, any sort of no further developments would be announced yes. on that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and there's a newsletter. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'll be able to type in the links in time, but I mean, a quick Google will probably get you to those places. And if you just sort of contact Wikimedia UK, uh, the info at Wikimedia UK event, uh, um, website then. yes info at wikimedia.org.uk um, please don't telephone us because we're all still working remotely <laughs> so uh does anyone have any further questions just before we run out of time uh for any of our speakers yes we are we are talking to um whose knowledge um we, we speak to anacy regularly but thank you jim um, good call any more for any more um, I'll put my own email in the chat as well, just to sort of, and in case anyone wants to find out a bit more about the work that we do at the university or in Scotland. Uh, but uh, I will also upload Dr. Sarah Thomas's talk to YouTube, because we missed, unfortunately, we weren't able to catch that. Uh, and she's talking about other brilliant work we've done in Scotland as well as supporting Scots Wikipedia. Um, but I think that's our hour up. Um, I'll, I'll email out Sarah's talk and any the talk recording. Uh, Paolo, did you want to say I something? A, I do have a question, really. I mean, I'm really, um, I'm, I've known Edinburgh have been very much involved in Wikipedia and um, Wikimedia for a while now, and I'm at the University of Sussex. I guess I'm uh, interested in why kind kind of it's quite untraditional it's not necessarily traditional universities aren't necessarily engaging in the same way as edinburgh uh, i would like to see much more of them doing so but i just wanted to, to want to know a bit more about your philosophy and really why why you are taking this um um these steps um it, it's really we were sort of tasked with how we could best support um information literacy and digital skills at the university a bit better but really it, it was it was a student it was the student association uh, Lorna can speak to this as well about the that they, they were uh, encouraging us to make more open resources more open education resources and challenged our senior managers to do more and that and that that therefore lent us to develop a policy which then uh, for OERs, and that required people to then implement that policy. Uh, so we have an OER service and a Wikimedian to help embed open practice at the university and raise awareness of why it's a good thing and how, and how the how and the why. Mm -hmm. So, but all of our work is very closely aligned with our institutional commitments to sharing open knowledge to, to developing data science skills, to developing di digital skills. And this helps leverage funding for, for doing this work. And what we find is that this is a multiple return on investment as well in that respect in what you can actually achieve. Lorna, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I think you've actually covered everything I would have said to you. But yeah, this is part of a, a much wider commitment that the University of Edinburgh has to open this in many forms. And as you said, we do see it as being very much part of the university's uh, vision and mission to share knowledge. And one of the, the best ways to do that is to make knowledge open. And whether it's open education resources, sharing information on Wikipedia, uh, whether it's... Uh... Oh, I think Lauren is frozen. OK. No, it's fantastic. I, Sorry, we lost you a bit there. Are you back, uh, Lorna? Yes, sorry, did I cut out there? <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think I got it. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and also, obviously, Edinburgh's made that commitment, but perhaps all university, it would be nice to see all universities doing something similar, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's understanding why the, the, this is, would engage is a good idea and trying to sort of understand where the funds would come from to sort of, um, because for many, I don't think they will see it as a priority but they will see the, the things that it can achieve as a priority. And mm. it's carrying those things up. Um, so um, we're, we're also very keen that this summer, our students are, are presented with a video, a short video of why the university has partnered with Wik Wikimedia in this way, and why digital research skills, the supporting of digital research skills, particularly now is, is, is something that we need to be thinking about more. And we're going to get students to create that video and then disseminate it to all our new uh, undergraduates enrolling in the autumn. So that because we don't just want it just to be 10 or 12 courses that are thinking about these things. We want it to be in a, a embedded as a what is our relationship with Google and Wikipedia and our, our disciplines? And as soon as we start thinking about researching a topic, you know, we, we do really have to start thinking about these things in a much more coherent way than we are currently doing. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go because uh, I've got another meeting to go to, but it's, it's, uh, I would like to thank everyone that participated today and for everyone's uh, uh, contributions and feel free to follow up with me or anyone else uh, after today as well. Okay, thanks, thank you so much. Bye. Everyone. Thanks Hannah, thanks Bye. Laura, thanks Sarah and Karen and everyone else that came by. <laughs>